this, uh, this past week, I got a message from a friend and it said that I'm one of the kindest people he knows. And I wrote back and told him, your exposure to me is really limited. <laughs> I, I, really, I really do try to be a kinder person, but I'm also trying to be a more honest one. Um, this isn't a story I'm proud of, um, but it bears telling because it's part of who I am. The story is called, What I Owe Her. My five-year-old got frustrated recently and accidentally snapped the head off his favorite toy dinosaur. He came running into the room, laid his head in my lap, and wept. I stroked his hair, and I said, I'm not angry. I'm sad for you, though, because now you can't play with it anymore. Sweetheart, sometimes when you do things because you're mad, you break things that can't be fixed. And no sooner had the words left my lips than my eyes fell shut, and I found myself looking not at an image of a toy dinosaur, but of a tiny silver pendant and her. I'd come to the preppy junior high by way of a psych hospital and a children's home prior to that, so nobody was terribly surprised when I landed in the small, painfully quiet room where in-school suspension was held. That's where we met. I liked her right away, and not just because she was one of the few people who didn't run and feigned or legitimate terror as I came down the hall. She took a genuine interest in me, stood up for me, invited me to sleep over at her house. She even asked me to sing with her in an upcoming talent show. And mind you, I wasn't singing in public back then, so it was a big deal. She even gave me her favorite necklace, a pendant on a slender silver chain. And you know, I was a really jaded kid, so looking back, it astounds me just how naive I was about some of the things that happened during the year we were friends. When she called me a prude for going into the walk-in closet to change clothes, I assumed she was just, you know, teasing me. When I'd spend the night at her house and wake up to find her lying there staring at me, and she'd say, you're beautiful when you sleep, I'd just laugh and tell her to shut up. When her mom caught a whiff of my body spray one morning and said, you smell lemony, could I taste you? And with her daughter standing there, leaned in and ran her tongue in slow circles down my neck. Well, her mom was blind, so I figured maybe it was something blind people did. When it find on, finally dawned on me what she'd been trying to do, I was frightened. And then I was grossed out. And then I was angry. I didn't know how to deal with it, how to deal with her, so I didn't deal with her at all. I erased her from my life, didn't speak to her, didn't acknowledge her, didn't even return fire when classmates told me she'd been bragging about how she was going to beat me in the upcoming talent show, which we obviously didn't end up performing in together. I sang a solo instead. She did too, James Taylor. Shower the people you love with love, but delivered in tones so morose classmates were whispering that she might jump off the roof after the show. She didn't. She did slip out of the building right after I got my blue ribbon. On Monday, she started rumors that I'd bribed the judges. On Wednesday, there was a note in my locker, a full page of double-spaced vitriol that claimed she had thrown the talent show for me and that I owed her. Oh, and she wanted her necklace back. I left her a note back that read, please meet me in front of my shop class after sixth period. That afternoon, as I turned the corner and saw her standing there, all of a sudden, my hurt and my fear and my fury all collided inside me, making my jaw clench and my heart pound and my skin pulse to the cadence of the drums of war. As I got closer, some tiny part of my brain noticed her raised eyebrows, the sliver of her lower lip held between her teeth, her wholly unguarded posture, and I knew she hadn't come to tell me off. She wanted to talk things out. Some tiny part of my brain knew that, but I was too far gone to process it. When I got within three steps of her, I looked her dead in the eye. With the next step, I announced, you're right, I do owe you something. And as I took my last step forward, I raised an open hand and slammed it into her cheekbone. I'm not gonna pretend like I hadn't planned on hitting her 
it's what I had in mind when I wrote the note. In my mind, though, it looked a bit more like, you know, something out of a soap opera. I was going to slap her across the face in that you bitch kind of way they always do. And she would clasp her cheek in disbelief and shame, and I would storm off. But never having given full vent to my anger, because I come from a long line of violent people, and that would have been dumb, I had no idea how much power that anger would give me. So when my hand connected with her cheek, I didn't hear the vindicating smack I'd been listening for. I heard a sickening thud that told me her whole skull had absorbed the blow meant only for her skin. And a whisper of the breath she lost as she went careening toward the floor and the thunder of the protective cage around her broken heart slamming into the tile. With the other hand, I flung the delicate silver chain in shock, but still drunk with hate. I spat, and here's your damn necklace. I hadn't killed her, fortunately. But that day, we died to each other. For the rest of the year, we passed in the hallway like ghosts. No longer angry, but no longer anything else either. We ended up near each other in a handful of awkward moments over the next couple of years. We never talked again. You know, even that day, I knew I was wrong. Yes, she should have been more honest with me. And yeah, her mom should have been arrested for the way she went about trying to open me to possibilities. But in my heart, I knew it hadn't been a trick. She really did care for me. She was a lonely 14-year-old trying to figure out who she was and what belonged in that aching chasm in her heart and how to get it there. She was a hungry beggar who got desperate enough to steal something to feed her soul. And when I caught her trying to steal it from me, I didn't just punish her, I brutalized her. Sometimes when you do things because you're mad, you break things that can't be fixed. And someday I hope to find out she wasn't one of them. I hope she's found someone who loves her, someone who didn't need to be lured in under the guise of platonic friendship someone who helped her heal from the blow she was dealt by the hand of a girl she loved. I hope she's forgiven me. I hope she doesn't still have the necklace. And I don't know whether I'll ever see her again, but if I do, I hope I'll have the strength to make myself as vulnerable as she did that day and finally give her what I owe her. <laughs>